disease. It's one of the greatest medical inflictions of the world today. One common problem occurs with the heart's valves, which regulate the flow of blood. Globally, almost 200,000 people undergo heart valve implantations each year. 30,000 of those are children. However, for children, valve replacement operations come at a price. Seven-year-old Kirill is a familiar case. Since birth, he's suffered from a life-threatening heart valve disease. After a string of unsuccessful operations, his parents brought him to see Dr. Felix Berger at the German Heart Institute in Berlin to fit a new valve. One year ago that we have seen us last time, huh? I'd like to welcome you. Hello. Well, the operation in 2007 went uh, perfectly well and uh, the situation of the child improves dramatically and we can send him uh, at home uh, very quickly after two weeks uh, stay in the hospital. But unfortunately, since the operation, Kirill's heart rejected the valve. So now he faces yet more traumatic surgery, which puts him and other children in his situation at risk. We tried to keep him as calm as possible because the doctors told us, be careful he doesn't fall and hurt himself. In the beginning we restricted his activities and now we're waiting for him to be able to run and jump again. Are you okay? Valve rejection is just one of a long list of complications associated with heart operations. But it's the aim of Life Valve to tackle that list and to give children like Kirill a fighting chance. Currently, for surgeons like Simon Hörstrup, there are two types of heart valves to treat patients, and each comes with its pros and cons. One uh, type is the so-called mechanical heart valves, an example of this being here. It's a very um, simple valve made of metal and carbon. The downside of this is that, of course, as an artificial implant, they cannot grow. So for children, there is the limitation that if you implant those uh, prostheses, you would have to replace them. And if we have to implant a valve very early in, in, in life, uh, this valve will not grow anymore. That means that uh, the valve will be some, someday too small in regard to the development of uh, uh, the boy or the girl and needs another replacement just to adopt to the, to the growth of the, of the patients. The other type of valve is a biological valve. Um, they are made of fixed animal tissue, for example, from uh, calves or pigs. The disadvantage is that they degenerate uh, relatively quickly. After 10 to 12 years, uh, these valve prostheses are degenerated and you have to do a re-operation to put in a new valve. Life Valve aims to take the best bits from the current valves and create a hybrid, one that's tough, can grow as children grow, and is made of a material which the heart won't reject. It's a tall order, but Simon and his group have made considerable progress. One breakthrough is a technique called tissue engineering, taking cells from individual patients and growing them to form new tissue. Yeah, tissue engineering uh, uses uh, First of all, cells. So you have to get cells from the patient. Uh, you take these cells, expand them in the laboratory. You can uh, take them from bone marrow, from bi little biopsies of the body. And these cells then are expanded, multiplied in the laboratory. The key to growing the new tissue is this machine, the bioreactor. The bioreactor system uh, mimics the situation we find in the body. Uh, so we have body temperature, 37 degrees Celsius. And the most important part is that we have flow and pressure conditions, a pulsed flow which is uh, very similar to the situation in the body. And by these uh, circumstances, we condition, we train uh, the tissue-engineered heart valves and adapt them uh, to the situation, to the function they will face in the body later on. 
The hope is the tissue from which the valve is made will feel very much at home when placed into the heart, and the heart won't reject it. So the next step is to grow the valve itself. To do this, the engineered tissues are seeded onto a three-dimensional scaffold of the heart valve. Here you see an example of uh, such a heart valve we want to create. So the white inner part is the heart valve scaffold. This has the shape of a heart valve. The tissues grow on the scaffold, taking its shape. And this white scaffold is made of a polymer which degrades away. So it's only for a certain time there. It serves as a guiding structure for the cell in growth. After about a month of tissue growth, the heart valve is ready for implantation into the patient. Replacement of heart valves is another area where scientists are making great strides. Today, almost all replacements are performed with open heart surgery. For the patient, it's a pretty gruesome experience, which involves cutting into their breastbone and actually stopping the heart. It's a risky operation and mortality rates are high. But Life Valve has devised an ingenious method which will hopefully do away with open heart surgery altogether. What we aim for is uh, to implant the heart valve ideally by a catheter. So um, the catheter can be introduced uh, through a vessel, a peripheral vessel, through the leg, the groin for example, and then pushed forward into the heart and deployed in the heart. The heart valve itself remains within the patient, but the team are developing a stent which will dissolve over time. Currently, the stent is still made of a metal, nitinol in this case, which is not biodegradable. So the aim of the project, and this is the next part here of the sequence, is to replace the nitinol stent by a biodegradable polymer stent, which then uh, allows us to have an implant which can be implanted minimally invasively and after a certain time will be fully degraded uh, in the patient's body after implantation. Doctors hope the new heart valves will be available within five years and that the next time they operate on Kirill, it will be the last. For the next generation of children who require a heart valve replacement, the exciting developments made by the life valve scientists in Europe will mean a much simpler and hopefully much more successful solution. A valve grown from the tissue of the patient which can see them through childhood and allow them to lead a normal adult life. Okay. It's a success story Kirill hopes to be a part of.